Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Senate County Board of Commissioner meeting, Thursday, June 23rd, 2022. We'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Prayer, anybody, Reverend? Sure. Uh, please bow your heads and join me in a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful spring day. Uh, we ask that you guide us in our uh, discussions as it relates to those we represent. We ask in a special way that you watch over those who are protecting our freedoms and their families. We ask all this through your Son. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Pierre Diesel. Here. Commissioner Schaff. Here. Commissioner Kirsten. Here. I will accept the motion to approve the digital audio recording of our previous board session <coughs> way back on June 9th, 2022 for regular session. So moved. And I will second. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Schaff. Yes. Commissioner Paradiso. Yes. Thank you. So first item of business, we have a bid opening, School of Opportunity Parking Lot Project. <coughs> Stacy. Yep. Sign in sheet. We have one bid. One bid. Again, this is for the Seneca County Opportunity Parking Lot. Um, let's see, engineer's estimate. Um, Lou, do you happen to know what that is? Estimate. The estimate? 400. You know what the estimate was? 400. Okay, all right. Uh, so the first bid I have is from Helms and Son Excavating. And the total bid amount is four hundred thousand six hundred four zero zero six zero zero point zero zero. That's the only one I have. Okay, turn that over to you. Yep. Make sure everyone signs a sheet, right? Yep. Anything Watch else? It. Comments? Anything? We good? Stay. Yep. Okay, so. Uh, Amateur Radio Week, and uh, we have a proclamation we would like to read, but before that, uh, we'd like to invite you to come up and say a few words. For, there's probably many of us don't really realize all the things you do. Right? Appreciate that. Thank so you. Welcome. Please just introduce yourselves and um, take it from there. Okay, I'm Mike Mastro. Some of you might know me as the Buffalo Wild Wings guy. <laughs> also a ham radio amateur radio operator and this is... My name's Denny Wilkinson. I'm the president of the club. <laughs> and my name's Deb Wilkinson. I'm a secretary treasurer. <clears throat> and, and we're talking about the Seneca Radio Club which um, serves Seneca County. Okay. And the club has grown quite a bit over the last few years. We've got 40 some odd active members at this point soon to be 50. Um, a lot of amateur radio operators in Seneca County. I think there's 200 licensees uh, that currently hold licenses, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this weekend, we're planning what they call Field Day. It's a competition and contesting type situation that involves emergency setup of amateur radio equipment and during that time, we have to make as many two-way contacts as possible. Some of those are done digitally, some with Morse code, and some locally. Um, we do plan this Sunday morning around 5 a.m. We're gonna bounce a signal off the space station. Um, it's gonna make a pass. I think the pass is low on the horizon, so it'll be a short pass. Normally, if it's straight overhead, it's eight minutes. This pass will be about a five minute pass. We're gonna bounce a signal off that. It will come down on the other side of the country. And when that happens, if we get an answer, we receive points for things like that. We, we'll get 100 points for that contact. So that's a big one. Um, we also get points if 
I'm just going to say this, an elected official shows up <laughs> this weekend, okay, and there's, let me think, one, two, three, four, and there's one that's about ready. So, I mean, we, we get 100 points for that, too. So if anybody wants to come to that and check it out. Uh, At 5 in the morning. That, well, you know, that, 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 yeah, there you go. Paradiso, you're just getting home <laughs> at, five, at five in the morning. Right? There's a alarm going on. Number one. <laughs> but, but anyways, that's when that pass is going to occur. But we're, we're active from 2 a, or I'm sorry, 2 p.m. on Saturday until 2 p.m. on Sunday. We're going to stay up 24 hours to get this job done. And we're running five separate, actually six separate stations. So we expect to be in the top, the very top, of what they call the 5A classification. That's where we're competing. And uh, we think TIF in Ohio, I think we're gonna put it on the map this year because we're really well organized. So just a thought. Plenty of great food out there too. So if you wanna stop out, come on out. Good I'd like stuff. to make a motion that we make uh, Commissioner Paradiso our commissioner representative. <laughs> <laughs> It needs to be out there 24 hours. <laughs> well, we do have a class coming up. I might have missed it, but where are you gonna be? We're going to be at Meadowbrook. Okay, you didn't say that, right? And you didn't get a sec. Tyler didn't get a second, but I will third that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right? okay, you will be at Meadowbrook. Yes. We'll be at Meadowbrook. Okay, so good stuff. We and oh, we yeah. change the location every oh, year. Yeah. Change the location every year. So if you're interested in amateur radio, it's a great thing. We can run email without the internet. We don't need it. Um, it's the most interesting thing ever. You, it's 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 incredible what can be done with this this technology so Where, give me one aha moment <clears throat> when you do the signal thing you talk to somebody in Siberia or something um, I, mean, I don't know what I've got a personally <clears throat> yeah. um, I've yeah. got a contact with Australia I went around the planet the long way versus the short way across the Pacific I went across past Europe <laughs> and um, ended up with 65 watts that's it that's all the power I needed wow. to make that contact so if that tells you anything, that signal bounced off the clouds um, and off the ionosphere several times to get there. And then they heard me, so I completed that contact. It was a, that's probably one of my best. Antarctica, got that. Um, Alaska, obviously. We send signals over the North Pole to Russia, okay, and to the Ukraine. So we, we talk to those folks too. So, and uh, you know, even through this turmoil over there, there's a lot of Ukrainian contacts that are still being made. So just a thought on that. Okay. Did you ever talk to Italy? Quite a few times. Okay. Okay. Sure, if there's a question. I was out there last year at Hedges Boyer when they had their event for their elected official, and it was very eye-opening. Um, they were training brand new members or kids that they had to set up for them to look at and uh, I learned a lot and, and I know that we utilize them if all our radio systems would go down then that's who we have in our contact files and we have a system or a, a little setup at the at the sheriff's office that we would revert to if we would lose all radio communications in Seneca County so they are a very um, useful um, group and and thanks that the organization that they have uh, they're definitely on our tree of, of things in, in emergencies. That's originally how we got started. The, mm -hmm. He was a sheriff's deputy at the time, and the radio, or the towers did go down. They couldn't talk to their deputies. And so he got his license, and uh, he goes, you ought to get yours, too. And I went, all right. So, <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and I will say we're getting more women in the club, too, more wives and everything. Well, you guys are a team, Deb. I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen either one of you without the other one. Either, so. Yes, that's, that's pretty thank cool. you. Good stuff. Yeah. And and you know we'd like to just thank the commissioners for um, you know taking the time and making the effort to uh, for the proclamation and things like that because it's it, it means a lot to us as a group and uh, we'll return those favors down the road. We definitely will. Oh, so thank it's, you. It's great. Any comments from anybody? One other thing: if yeah. these things here go down, we have radio contact. Yeah. If the cell phone towers get hit, all we got to do is plug into a battery and we're ready to go. Take a car, 12 volt battery, and set up with an antenna, and we're ready. And we do have go packs, which are set up that way, out mm -hmm. in public safety, <coughs> mm -hmm. that we can set those up. And like something would happen here, we could set up a command center here or wherever you want. So, and, we, and we use solar. Yeah. We use solar power to recharge right. the batteries. So, so we don't need the grid. We just don't need it. It's 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 nice to have it. But we don't need it. We're going to see. We're, you'll see some solar stuff out there this week, 
and some really crazy looking, really crazy looking antennas this weekend. But they so, work. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. But thank you so much. Thank you. So we uh, will have uh, our resident proclamation reader, Commissioner Schuff. <laughs> nice. Uh, the best reader of the group. So we have a proclamation, uh, Amateur Radio Week, which is June 19th through the 25th. Whereas amateur radio operators are celebrating over a century of the miracle of the human voice broadcast over the airwaves. And whereas amateur radio has continued to provide a bridge between peoples, societies, and countries by creating friendships and the sharing of ideas. And whereas amateur radio operators have also provided countless hours of community services, both in emergencies and other local organizations throughout these decades, and these amateur radio services are provided wholly uncompensated. And whereas the, the state also recognizes the services amateur radios people also provide to our emergency response organizations, including the Seneca County EMA, FEMA, and the American Red Cross, the Salvation Army, health care facilities, hospitals, and extended care, uh, National Weather Service, Skywarn, and others. And whereas these same individuals have further demonstrated their value in public assistance by providing free radio communications for local parades, bikeathons, walkathons, fairs, and other charitable public events. And whereas the county commissioners of Seneca County, Ohio, recognize and appreciate the diligence of these hams, who also serve as weather spotters and skywarn program of the National Weather Service. The ARRL is the National Association of Amateur Radio in the USA. And whereas the ARRL Amateur Radio Field Day exercise will take place on June 25th through the 26th of 2022 and is a 24 hour emergency preparedness exercise and demonstration of the radio amateur skills and readiness to provide self supported communications without further infrastructure being required. And now, therefore, it be resolved the Seneca County Board of Commissioners hereby officially recognize and designate June 19th through the 25th as Amateur Radio Week in Seneca County. A witness whereof we, the Seneca County Board of Commissioners, have hereunto set our hand to this proclamation this 23rd day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. Commissioners Anthony Paradiso, Tyler Schuff, and Michael Kirshner. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, let's get a quick photo. Maybe that'll get you some uh, points. <laughs> Can you Photoshop that? Can you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you on the site, like out there. <laughs> so send this one to the uh, um, Tyler's on top of it. Just make sure the chair. Send this on to whoever. Keep Which need the chairs out of the way. Yeah. Put Come on up, we'll get a quick photo. <laughs> We have to sign it, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. That's why I didn't send it. Thanks for coming in, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, pretend like you guys like each other. <laughs> cool, cool. Yep, let's do one. Yeah. Like, Maybe hold like, that up. Like I like that line. Yep. Yeah. Wait, the Daddy short here. guy's in the middle. The short guy's not supposed to be in the middle. <laughs> All right, you guys. Hold it up. Yep, hold it up. You guys ready? Three, yeah. two, one. And three, two, one. Look at Kayla. Make sure you get one. I know. That's mine good. are always a lot worse than yours. Oh, that's not true. Okay, we're good. Thank, thank you guys. I can't, can't, can't suck in my belly that long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you don't mind, thank we're good. Thank you. 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 You know all that. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we uh, we have a ditch hearing at ten thirty, and um, uh, we've got a little bit of time, so I guess we'll go into commissioner reports. You want to do the opportunity center? Right uh, did I miss that? Their accreditation. I didn't. Uh, yes. Yeah. Let's do that.
Uh, Lou, thanks. I brought Aaron Simmons with me. Aaron Simmons is the board president of our board. And she participated a little bit in the accreditation review. So I'm pleased to, to announce, I think that it was in the paper, but the Seneca County Board of Developmental Disabilities was just reviewed by the Department of Developmental Disabilities. You know, it's really a comprehensive accreditation review. And in that review, they literally set a team of eight people to come out on site. It actually is about a three month process. In the beginning, we set all of our policies and procedures regarding all of our program areas to the state. They review them to make sure they comport and comply with Ohio Revised Code and administrative law or administrative rules. Um, and then they feed, give us feedback on site. Then, then on site, they come in and look at our actual processes. So in our actual processes for, for some of our different areas, so starting in early intervention, they look at assessments, how we're assessing the needs of families. And then they look at um, individual family support plans, making sure they meet all the requirements and that we're addressing the needs of the families. They talk with the families about the services to make sure families are happy with the quality of services. And then they look at the outcome and then look at all the documentation requirements. So being a government entity, we have a lot of documentation requirements. Adult services, they do the same thing. Uh, they did that for community employment, group employment, and adult rehabilitation. Um, the key part of the review really is our service and support administrators, which are our case managers. Our case managers serve about 400 some families throughout our community. They meet with those folks. Um, Actually, it's probably up to 520 now because our numbers continue to grow. We're seeing a lot of growth with younger kids. But the uh, SSAs will go out into the homes and assess the needs of the children or the adults and then hook those people up with people that can provide those supports. Um, like I said, it's a comprehensive documentation review. They talk to actual people we contract with to make sure that we're working with supporting co contractors. So folks like ECI, REM, um, uh, Renaissance, just to name a few. Um, they look at our transportation, look at the fleet, making sure they have all the inspections necessary, making sure all the drivers have the training. They look at our behavioral support program, so we work with some challenging children and adults. We have some pretty rigid rules that we have to follow in terms of how we work with those children. So how our staff are trained, they make sure staff are trained, that we're using the right techniques, making sure that there's no abuse or neglect anywhere within our system. And so we are responsible for reviewing any type of abuse or neglect and reporting it to either law enforcement or to children's services for anybody with a developmental disability in the county and that we have a, a distinct person uh, who's our investigative agent who investigates those things. So that's a pretty rigorous review as well, literally going over thousands and thousands of questions. Med administration, looking at our staff trained to delegate medications, are all the medications there per person? Are they doctor's orders to back up those medications? Um, they looked at our community advocacy and supports. Um, our self-advocates did a presentation. Sometimes when you guys have more time, I'd love to show a little video of our self-advocates. They presented a video to the accreditation team on what it's like receiving services in Seneca County, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, they looked at our self-advocacy training. I talked about MUI and then human resources. They looked at all of our staffing requirements. Like I'm required to have a certification. So they, they always pick me, um, they look at my driver's record. They look at my certification, <coughs> making sure that I have all the necessary coursework and my <coughs> CEUs up to date. And they do that with all of our staff, with, with a, a representative sample of our 100 and some staff. So it's a very comprehensive review that literally there's thousands of data points that they look at. Each of those data points could reflect in a citation. We are one of three counties that I know of so far in the state that has, for, has ever received zero citations, um, which yeah. is really incredible when you look at all the information that we do. And I don't know, Erin, if you want to talk about what your experience was with it. Um, so I've been involved with the Board of DD since my son was two. I have two boys with autism. I started out with um, the early intervention program, moved into the school age. My son attends Opportunity Center, which is how I got involved. This is my first accreditation. And what I've learned over the past years and seen is the staff out there is amazing and dedicated. Um, it's a very welcoming place, and everyone out there loves what they do. and 
it's just an amazing place. Um, if I encourage anyone to get involved if you haven't been to any of the community events. Um, the people there are dedicated and it shows in the services that we have and so getting this accreditation with zero citations just shows how dedicated and happy our people are to serve our individuals here in the county. So I'm incredibly honored to be part of the board and the program. It's, it's amazing out there, so I really encourage anyone to just get involved and see what it is there because Lou and the management team do an incredible job. Um, the board is beyond thrilled with the accreditation and, and proud of all the hard work that they do out there. And we thank you guys for your support so that our board can do what we do so that we can serve all of the individuals at the level that we are. We look forward to continuing that. So thank Impressive. you very much. Wow. Extremely just the, the key quote to me that they gave at the exit was that we truly are helping people live their best lives. And to me, that, that says it all. And I, that wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the support of the community, the support of the commissioners, incredible staff that are dedicated to improving the lives of people that we serve. So, you know, we're very excited about this. Okay. Wonderful. Good. Appreciate uh, all your hard work and dedication. Um, just want awesome. just want to say to Aaron a few few months ago when we had that children family first council meeting when you told your story and your background and how you got involved and why you got involved I just want to say uh, I didn't get to talk to you after meeting but that was very touching and just um, I know your heart's in it for the right reasons and just appreciate all you do both of you. Thank you. Just real quick on another positive note because a lot of good things happening is the playground is installed um, not fully the first the first part of it so all the equipment is there. Um, we're waiting for them to come pour concrete around and then they'll pour, which is the second piece that's got to be done, and then the third piece is the pour and play. We're hoping to do a, a groundbreaking in August, which we'll invite everybody in the community to come out to, but it, it really looks nice. The kids are really going to enjoy it. So thanks for the commissioners for helping support that project. Um, Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me there, Stacey. Yep. <coughs> Yeah, we do have a few minutes to uh, maybe go through commissioner reports. Uh, anyone want to jump in? Or yield to you? Uh, no, I, you know we've got uh, a busy schedule this week. Uh, we certainly have uh, we have our meeting tonight. This is a reminder uh, EMS yeah. meeting uh, out at the NCOESC. So we'll be busy with that. Good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I had a Children and Family First uh, Council meeting here this week, went over some different policies, procedures, that sort of thing, so I had discussions on that. Um, we also had Board of Revisions this week. Um, also, uh, we have a ribbon cutting today at 4 o'clock, and that is for uh, the car spa. That is the car wash next to Big Dipper uh, that has been bought out here in the last year or so, and I know the uh, gentleman at Five Star Put a lot of time and work and money into it, renovating that and updating some of the equipment. So, if you want to come off that ribbon cutting, that's at four o'clock. <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Paradiso and I also attended another ribbon cutting uh, for uh, Braised and Balanced, which I uh, want to congratulate the owners of that. They moved over here from Fremont and they teamed up with uh, the Chandelier. So, it's always nice when you kind of see two businesses team up to share a space and kind of work together on that sort of thing. But what they do is meal prep. So, uh, if you're in our shoes and saying you always get time for lunch or you're on the run or don't have time to cook a meal, they do meal prep for you. It's a lot of healthy meals, so I uh, wish them the best of luck and congratulations to them on their new space. Um, also, as many of you have seen, we're starting the uh, health department building renovations here, uh, so looking forward to seeing the final product on that. I think that's going to be a major improvement compared to where we're at now. So. Uh, Time will tell here. Looking forward to that. And then also just wanted to uh, give condolences here and uh, uh, ask for prayers and condolences here to uh, Sean Tyler. Uh, he was a firefighter for the city of Tiffin. Um, knew, him, knew him fairly well, same age as me, but uh, he had just recently passed here. So keep his family and friends in your uh, thoughts and prayers, please. That's all I have. Thank you. When will the um, renovation be completed? Thanksgiving or something like they that? They are estimating it to be done around November or November. December. Okay. I just have one thing to add. Uh, I went to uh, Jeff Larrick, who was the mayor of Republic for many years, owner of Sonic Hauling, uh, uh, is uh, uh, relocated to Tennessee. And this past week was his last meeting at Republic. Every time I go in, they mentioned you, you stopped in, Sheriff. 
Uh, but so I went over there on behalf of the three commissioners and um, uh, thanked him for a service that I mean he's he published a great village, a great asset to our community. Um, he uh, he's done a lot with EMS in the early phases. Um, he had a lot of tough. It's, it's just great leadership. We're gonna miss him. So just want to recognize Jeff and thank him for uh, his service at Republic. Not sure who the new mayor is, if that's been decided yet, but um, Jeff's no longer there. Mike, Stace, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. How would that work, Mike, for a village mayor? Would that go to the central committee, or do you know how that process works? It depends on what their charter says. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Stacy. Uh, yeah. Only a couple things. Um, Budget Commission met the other day. No real changes to <coughs> the certification. <laughs> Um, with conversations with Julie, uh, we've set the uh, budget cycle. Uh, budget Commission is going to expect revenues to be back by September 12th, and then expenses are due back to us by October 10th. So it'll all be done through the VIP system, the analytics system. Uh, it went well last year, so I'm uh, looking forward to do it. It just makes the process easier, <coughs> less errors. You know, there's always human errors retyping everything. So. This will be a direct input, so uh, got those dates set. Um, as Tyler mentioned, Perry Street lot is now closed. They're going to start on the wall. <coughs> um, probably don't look for it to be open until November, or December. Um, I got a call from a young lady from the EPA, and she reached out for our assistance. Uh, they had to cancel their um, hearing on the 27th. They were going to do it virtually and with the large attendance at the last hearing um, for Sunny Farms Landfill, uh, they had felt the, the need that it should be in person. Um, they're, they're struggling to find a venue in Fostoria. I mean, we heard when we were at the meeting that, you know, just they had it in Tiffin, why didn't we have it in Fostoria? Um, and EPA, they're having trouble finding anybody, even to call them back for a venue. They said there was probably 350 people at the meeting, and so she's looking for a venue of that size. I said I definitely I asked Jimmy. Jimmy's starting to look. I didn't know, you know, big venues over there. If you had any ideas or any contacts. What about the high school, like the uh, gymnasium or something? Uh, if you could reach out to them, I think she's having trouble getting a call back. Um, Roby Training Center, try that. Is that big enough? I don't know if it's big enough, but um, okay. I think they can open up the back. Okay, because you know, we heard you know, complaints, and I think that's been an issue. The, the last one we did, Jimmy tried to help out with. We had it, you know, one in set for Fostoria, and then there was a ended up being a conflict at the last minute. So, you know, they want, they want to have a voice, and we're trying to get the voice in. Astoria, so. How about the sportsman out there? Is that big enough? Probably not. Is there any the learning no. center? Is there no. a big room in that learning center? You, you look. I don't know if there's a large enough room yeah. at the learning center. I know. I don't think we can use that. Well, the learning center's not big enough. I don't say. Well, we're not allowed to use that because of it. It's a state gotcha. thing, right, Ben? So. I don't know about that, but it, it's we, we. I researched all those things as I reported to the commissioners last. I know. But and it was very difficult. Forget what I said. Might be good. If you can get to school. schools, that's why we ended up at TIF, and it was the schools. No, it was nothing yeah. sinister. It was only that yeah. the availability. At Oak Brook, I mean, Hope Alone, Hope Alone might be an option, okay. or Meadowbrook, no. Meadowbrook, Meadowbrook. Okay. Hope Alone. Okay. 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 I'll reach out, get some names, and um, Jimmy will probably reach out, and she she just needed some help. So I told her we'd see what we could do. Okay. Uh, it's 1029, so let's uh, maybe dial in. Um, for those in the audience, we're going to have a uh, our annual ditch hearing with Sandusky Woods, Seneca County. I believe there's two components to it. Um, Thank you for calling the Sandusky County Conference Bridge. Please enter your conference room number. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who do we have on the line? This is Seneca County. 
Okay, we've got Sandusky County's on. I've got uh, Commissioners Miller, Zimmerman, and Schwoko in the room. Okay. I have Commissioners Kirshner, Paradiso, and Shelf. Thank you. We're just waiting for Wood County to jump on. Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning, Morning. Morning. Morning Rush. Tony, I met your brother last night at the uh, Mud Hens game. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> your brother. Actually, we can do the Seneca County, Sandusky Seneca County um, resolution right now while we're waiting for Wood County if you're all good with that. Sure. Sounds good. I've got um, resolution 22179 authorizing that the proposed maintenance work for 2022 for Bark Creek Joint County Ditch 673, Carson Group Joint County Ditch number 718, FL Cheney Joint County Ditch 752, Indian Creek Joint County Ditch 681, and the Stacy Group Joint County Ditch 831, <coughs> excuse me, and the Alley Ditch number 091 in Sandusky and Seneca counties to be approved as admitted by the Ditch Maintenance Supervisor. Um, rates are for the Bart Creek Ditch is 4%, Bartson is 718, or sorry, 3.5, Cheney is 4%, Indian Creek is 1%, Stacy Group is four and Alley Ditch is 3.3. Do we have any questions on that? Kirshner said I can only move for approval. Thank you. Roll call second. Yeah, we'll do roll call vote. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Swoko? Yes. Commissioner Zimmerman? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Wood County, did I hear you just jump on? Yes, you did. We're here. Okay. I've got um, all three commissioners from Seneca and Sandusky County here. Do you have all three of your commissioners? Yes, we do. All righty. we got a full house today. Mm -hmm. um, we just went ahead and took care of the uh, Sandusky Seneca County resolution. So I will read the Tri County Ditch. <coughs> Uh, resolution 22178, <clears throat> authorizing that the proposed maintenance work for the 22 Wilbur Bell Ditch um, number 2302A, the Big Mud Joint Ditch 717, and the Wagner Joint Ditch 783 in Sandusky, Wood, and Seneca counties, be approved as submitted by the Ditch Maintenance Supervisor. The race on those, the Wilbur Bell Joint County Ditch is 2.5, Big Mud is 3.5 and Wagner is 1.5. Any questions? Do you have any questions, thank you. I'll move for approval, Paradiso. Second, no. Okay, roll call. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Schwalkoff? Yes. Commissioner Zimmerman? Yes. Commissioner Herringshaw? Yes. Commissioner LaHoe? Yes. Commissioner Bolas? Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mr. Paradiso? Yes. All right, we are good <clears throat> to go. I will send um, the um, completed with the motions on there, resolutions to both counties. And if you can just sign off on those resolutions and send them back, I'll get completed to everybody. Sounds good, okay. thank you. Thanks, Trace. That was good, thank you. Everyone right. have a great thank weekend. You. you too. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks. Nice job, Kylie. Thank you. Sheriff, you're up. Welcome. Well, thank you. I'll try not to bore you. Okay. All right. So, through the magic of a uh, computer system, I tried to email it to her and it was too large. So, I had somebody run a thumb drive down and she has it so that it can uh, be up on the screen as well. I gave each of you a copy uh, so you can uh, um, fall asleep tonight if you want to read between the lines. I'm not going to go over every page. Um, so I want to thank the staff first uh, and foremost for the hard work that was put into this um, by getting me all the, the um, their particular areas of responsibility, all the numbers and stuff. This is the first time 
um, that it's presented in this type of fashion. Uh, we also included all the townships, which is the first time, and I've started to go around to the townships now uh, and giving them their piece of the pie out of this, not the whole annual report, but just their piece of the pie uh, on what what we particularly do for each of the townships, which has never been presented to them before. Um, so we break it down into how many calls that we've had for them, but also how many uh, how many times, uh, what, what type of calls that, that those are. Um, this report took way too long. <laughs> As I am used to uh, presenting it in February or March, usually an annual report. Next year, by the end of January, beginning of February, it will be. We have the format down. Uh, they know what to expect to give me what, what I want for um, the viewing pleasure for the citizens and the accountability that I want uh, to, to be transparent in, in what we do for, for the citizens of Seneca County. So expect this to be uh, on the agenda probably by the end of January, no later than the end of February uh, next year now that the format is in place. All we have to do is change the pictures and the numbers uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be ready to go. Um, <clears throat> for this uh, report, now that the framework's in place, um, uh, we'll go through it. And uh, so the first, you know, obviously there's a table of contents for uh, uh, you go quickly to whatever page that you that you want. Uh, the 45 pages worth is quite a bit, but a lot of it, um, 15 pages to be specific, are, are the township statistics that are in there for them. Uh, I have a letter that will change every year. Uh, obviously, my, the message from the sheriff uh, on uh, what's being highlighted and what's being presented for uh, the last previous year. So that, that will change. Uh, again, um, uh, I thank uh, the citizens, the, the commissioners, the county administrator for all the support that we've received last year. And I go into that in detail uh, throughout the report. Uh, the next one, since a lot of, um, uh, during the election, a lot of people didn't know who I was. Uh, we, we included the bio, uh, kind of give uh, the citizens a, a breakdown of um, what you get with your sheriff. You know, bullet points of uh, the education, the certif certifications, uh, and, and basically uh, my career in a nutshell there. Uh, page five there is the buck stops here people. These are the ones that are in charge of the divisions when we or reorganized uh, last year. Uh, these are the ones that uh, answer in, in our weekly command staff meetings. Uh, let me know what's going on in each of their divisions uh, and we make sure that uh, they're, they're accountable uh, for any complaints or accommodations that come in. Uh, we make sure that we get those uh, taken care of quickly. There have been some seat changes uh, for this year. So next year, you'll see some of these faces change. Uh, we had a retirement, uh, Ron Green there. He's on the, one of the last pages uh, on some of our retirements that we had. Um, so you'll see those faces change as well. Uh, the administrative staff that keeps the, the, the wheels moving at, at the uh, sheriff's office, those are the four ladies that uh, without their help, you know, we'd be uh, kind of at a, at a standstill with uh, uh, everything that goes on day-to-day -day operations out there since we're a 24-7 operation. All right, page seven is our mission, vi uh, vision, and core values. This was very important uh, when, when I um, started running and when I took over there, the, there was no mission statement, there was no vision uh, or any core values uh, written down anywhere. So we put a committee together, it took several months. Um, we selected people uh, from the civilian staff, from all the unions, uh, the different divisions that we have there from the jailers to the, the road deputies, dispatch, uh, kitchen area, uh, maintenance, and uh, they sat together. They looked over various um, <coughs> other ones that were examples, uh, but we wanted to make our own. So this is, I think, the most important thing that we accomplished last year is that we gave some direction uh, to the employees out there and it was input from them. This was all decided by them on uh, what their, what we, uh, feel that the mission should be for the citizens of uh, Seneca County, what the vision for the agency should be, and at our core, what our values are. And uh, right after they, that these were accepted uh, by me, then we went and uh, had some signage made and uh, throughout our building in the lobby, in the jail area, uh, right across from the locker room when they come out every day, uh, and in the patrol uh, office in our conference room are, are these three basically signage that that lists out the mission, the vision, the core values. And I think that's important so that the public knows uh, what what we we are about, but also that the staff sees it and uh, uh, through uh, through daily repetition, sees what, what, what's expected of them every day. All right, on page uh, eight there is the organizational chart. 
um, of the Seneca County Sheriff's Office if you've never seen it before. This is the breakdown from the top to the uh, very last uh, box. You know, uh, it starts with the citizens of Seneca County being the bosses um, and uh, goes right down to uh, our work crew, which is uh, becoming a, quite an asset. I hear from the townships when I go around and, and talk, they're back out there working from April uh, to October. So, um, so you can see how each division is broken down and how there's a structure of who reports to who and uh, overall who, who reports to, to me and then I report to the citizens and, and to the commissioners and, and people. And uh, there's some quite some history out there. Uh, the sheriff's office started in 1824. Uh, so the Tiffin uh, City is celebrating their 200th uh, birthday and in a couple years we'll be celebrating our 200th birthday. Uh, overall, the, the sheriff's office started in 1788 in the, in the uh, um, Ohio district or territory back then. Uh, but uh, Ohio, of course, wasn't uh, a state until 1801, but there's been a sheriff present uh, since 1788. So, um, but in Seneca County, the first, very first sheriff is listed there, and uh, I am honored and proud to be the 45th sheriff uh, since 1824. So there's some history there. And if you didn't know what uh, the sheriff's uh, history of the sheriff, there's a page there that you can read uh, for your viewing pleasure. Um, now we break it into the division. So we have the administrative division. Uh, they, they handle um, the courthouse security. They handle uh, some of the uh, budgeting, inventory, uh, the, the um, tags that go on everything that we purchase. They, do, they help with grants. Uh, they do the uh, accounts payable, the pay-in stuff. They do evidence room management, uh, records management, sheriff sales, civil processing, uh, includes all our CPOs, indictments, et cetera. And I have some statistics broken down for you here on all the papers that we serve throughout the year, um, CCW licensing. Uh, we started up the web check program last year as well. That's why you don't see some of the, the first quarter uh, having any, any numbers in them what, whatsoever. And then it, as we go on and as it, it was put out there to the public, you can come get your fingerprints done at the sheriff's office, including the ones that they had to go to other counties for, which were the criminal one um, that only the a sheriff's office can do for basically teacher's licensing and stuff like that. So now they can do it right here in the county. Um, we break down in prisoner transports uh, the, and the sheriff receives and stuff like that. So the numbers are all there for you. You can see that it's quite busy in the, in the civil and the administrative division. Uh, the Corrections Division, um, so that's broken down into a couple of different areas. We have the uh, medical area, but we also have some of the numbers of uh, all, all our bookings. Uh, we had 1,483 bookings uh, last year. Um, as you can see, some of the numbers there, felony, misdemeanors. Uh, there's some medical numbers there. There's kitchen numbers. I don't know if it surprised you, but 165,000 plus meals were served last year. Um, that's a lot. It so they, like that. it does. It, I was surprised with the number. I had to double check it, but um, you figure they have to serve three meals a day, uh, and our population is anywhere from 150 to 200 uh, on average. Um, so, and they do it for the juvenile center uh, across from us as well. Uh, and we're looking at some other contracts as well. But right now, this, with the supply line and stuff, uh, we have to just manage our own because we're having problems getting food supplies and the cost is increasing. So right now we put those um, contracts on, on hold that we were going to, to initiate with a couple of agencies uh, to bring in more revenue. Uh, but the kitchen staff does a wonderful job. They're there every day holidays um 365 days so they, they they don't get a break and there's only five uh, five of them and, and they do a great job same with warrants and transports um there was 837 uh, uh transports that were done last year uh six of them from out of state so um and we're looking at expanding that uh with the with the warrant list and, and having the u.s marshals help us track some of these people down that absconded years ago and have and have yet to be brought to justice and stuff um and then also uh, through a grant, uh, Firelands has an on-site uh, mental health evaluator there, and they're Monday through Friday. Um, and uh, that's something that is desperately needed. I've said it in the past here, you know, out of our 150 to 200 people, probably 80% of them are in there for some type of critical incident, drug abuse, uh, alcohol abuse, mental health, or a, a variation of both. Um, so having that person Monday through Friday with hours that they can see people, they can request uh, to, to see that person. They get evaluated when they come in um, it is very important. And those are the breakdowns uh, between male and female on the type of services that were provided them last year. 
Um, again, that's through, through a grant uh, process through the Mental Health Board uh, and Firelands, and uh, it, it all gets reimbursed. And uh, there's a case manager, and then there's a counselor that uh, works there to make sure that the intake is done in the amount of days that the state says and the federal ICE um, standards say that they, they have to be done. Uh, we just finished our, our uh, first uh, federal inspection um, uh, in May, and uh, it'll be posted, I think, this week uh, we passed. That's the new standards that we went to, we agreed to go to on April uh, when we got the pay increase from the $58 to $90 for the ICE detainees. Um, and so this was the first time, and uh, I was uh, holding my breath because the 2019 standards were a lot stricter than the 2000 standards, 19 years worth of different standards. Uh, but we passed with flying colors. There was a few minor issues that we've already corrected. Uh, the report uh, is or will be online uh, this week. Uh, or, or beginning of next week if it's not already online, and I think it is, um, and it, it, it basically is a transparency and accountability. It isn't ICE coming in and saying, oh, you're doing fine. It's actually they hire contractors that are civilians that come in and look for problems. That's their job. And uh, so it, it was a very uh, well done inspection, a week long, six inspectors on site every day. Uh, basically took over our training room. Uh, we were bringing files out. They went back and talked to inmates. Uh, they were very surprised. Uh, they said usually they get food complaints or medical complaints and they got zero. Um, they said we had a very clean facility uh, and uh, one of the cleanest they, they've ever seen. So the hard work that we put in last year, the five, four inspections that we passed last year, federally and the one state one is paying off. Uh, and again, kudos to you guys for giving the money to repair and fix uh, the washers, the dishwashers, the, the uh, air handlers, the boilers, because all that plays a part in the inspection. They look at everything, every nook and cranny. Uh, what's the heat like? What's the water temperature like? What's the food quality? All that stuff. So they dig in deep. And uh, we're already into next week having the second federal inspection already, even though we just finished another one. They look at different areas each time they come, though, and it's different groups that come. And it's all for accountability because of the contract and they're paying us uh, to house these people. Dispatch, uh, again, these are surprising numbers for the community if they have not, not, not uh, seen them before. Uh, the amount of volume of calls that they get, both 911, non-emergency type calls, the police uh, phone calls, the fire and EMS phone calls. Um, so they get walk-ins, uh, they have 274, so almost, um, almost every day somebody's walking in there with some type of complaint or uh, issue that they need to, to talk to in person. Uh, the dispatchers themselves monitor seven phone lines. It includes both of the uh, 911 lines, uh, the multiple radio frequencies, um, the deaf line, the business or home alarms that come in through the phone, bleeds computer, weather, tornado sirens, lifelike computer, and also they have to greet the public for any walking complaints or concerns. So why 12,000 in the first quarter? That jumps off the page. On the non-emergency? Yeah. Um, I think that that one was because we didn't have the phone system yet uh, replaced with the newer phone system we had. So everything was dumped in uh, uh, on other lines, the, the non-emergency lines. Uh, once we went to the new structured system um, that has a, uh, by the second quarter, I think we did, uh, it was either in March, May or June, we have a tree now that's taking care of a lot of the uh, phone calls. So it dropped off significantly. Before that, before that tree system, the old phone system they had, the dispatchers had to answer, answer every single one of those phone calls. And it took a lot of their time and stuff. So kudos to you, uh, also to the commissioner, I mean, and, and uh, Stacy for um, upgrading our phone system as quickly as you did, recognizing that, you know, that, that was a drain on our resources and stuff. Um, right now, currently, we're in that second phase of the dispatch center. They, are, they were moved yesterday to the EMA building, our secondary uh, dispatch location, the EOC, uh, thanks to the EMA, EMA for housing them for the next couple of weeks. Uh, beginning on Monday, the consoles that were ordered back in February or March are, are finally in, and that whole week or two week long, we gave it two weeks, hopefully we'll be done in a week. Um, but we want to do it right. We want to make sure that uh, the new wiring and everything is in place because we're still having a lot of radio 
issues um, with the uh, radio traffic that we have out there. So we're hoping that laying the new lines and having the new equipment in place will take care of those problems. We still haven't gone to digital yet, and that's um, based on the, the radio grant that we just put in for, and hopefully we'll get that before the end of the year and be able to go digital and communicate with the... Uh, Is that because you moved the old system, right? Correct. Once you moved it, it's never quite back. It, 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 was, it was staticky to begin with, but once we moved it yeah. and cleaned and then uh, put the new equipment in, uh, attaching those old wires and stuff like that, there's sometimes that the the dispatch won't hear anything, but you play it back, and it, it's it's clear as day that they can uh, or that it's recorded that the airwaves that it was there, but the dispatch speakers and the and the equipment that that was in place um, through the old wiring isn't receiving so it. This new system takes it, care of all that. Yes, um, by, right. and, and we're moving physically moving it from the room that it's in to the bigger room that's next to it that used to be the records room. Yeah, got it. In the detective bureau, there's a breakdown of the cases. I won't go over them, but you can look at that. There's the sex offender numbers in there. And for those of you that uh, aren't aware of the list that's here in Seneca County and what that list entails, because it is kind of confusing, I included in page 15 uh, 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 a breakdown of exactly what those tiers are uh, and what they mean um, uh, for us. So we do do address checks, that's why you see that. We only had seven new registered sex offenders in Senate County last year, I believe it's seven. And then, but the, the actual uh, checks that they do to verify that they are at the addresses that they are um, is almost every day that, that they were going out and making sure that those verification checks were done. Uh, the enforcement division. So overall, um, you, you can see in a couple more pages, our calls for services went up. We're recording exactly what we do for for um, uh, the transports, the the uh, traffic, uh, the accidents. We had we increased our accidents calls, so we went from an average of about seven thousand. If you look over a ten year average, which is, there's a chart coming up, um, and last year because of COVID, it was down to about or not last year, but the year before that in 2020, it was down to about. 5,800, 5,500 calls for service um, and, and exploded last year and we had 13,785 calls for service. So out of a 552 square mile county, you can see that we're all over the place. Uh, and the townships uh, bear that out as well when we get to those pages. Um, but the increase is that we're actually documenting what we're, what we're doing. So if we're doing a security check in Reed Township on a business, they're pulling a form for that. So then it shows that we were in Reed Township between these, you know, uh, time periods, and we checked this business um, before that wasn't being done. Same thing with serving the warrants and the civil uh, process papers. So if I'm sending a deputy from our office all the way to Bettsville to serve a paper, then you should pull a, a call for service on that because we're using resources. We're using the car, we're using the gas, the deputy's time, and everything. So those are considered calls for service. So it, it, part of that increase is. Um, accounting for everything that we do to, to be transparent and accountable to you of the bang for the buck. What, what, why are we having uh, this budget and what are you doing for this budget? So um, those are the numbers there broken down into some of the highlights. Next year we've redefined uh, some of our categories being that we're a multi-agency um, CAD system called a computer automated dispatch and RMS report management system that the, both police departments and all law enforcement are using Phoenix system. Um, we got together as a committee and uh, with the dispatcher's input from all the, the areas and the deputies and officers, how can we break these categories down to make them um, less general? So for example, when you look at uh, in the list here, you'll see that, um, let me find it. Uh, where is it? Maybe I don't have it on this one. But on the uh, township ones, a number one in our CFS code, and these codes go back 40 years, you know, that were used on the paper forms for all the police departments, that they generalized stuff so they didn't have to type a lot of stuff out. So if you had a call and the dispatcher put in the CFS code as one, um, that was a murder, that was a homicide, that was a unattended death or a suicide. So if you put it on the paper here, you might have 17, you know, in Eden Township. We didn't have 17 murders, we didn't have 17 homicides. Maybe some of them were suicide attempts and maybe some of them were uh, unintended deaths. Um, so the next year, the statistics will be less generalized and, and more uh, specific, breaking those categories apart. And so the committee took a long time doing those. We have them broken down. Um, so some of these grouped categories that you'll see uh, will be ungrouped for, for next year for better clarification for, for the public. 
Also on page 17, the next one, use of force, response to aggression is what it's called now, um, is, is a category that's supposed to be reported to the FBI uh, every year. Uh, there's no statistics prior to last year, so you'll see these um, grow at each year I come to give you the presentation. So 21 is the year 21, all the way on the right column of, of all the stuff. And it's broken down into, we fill out this form, it's a, it's a federal and a, and a state form that you're required to keep every time we utilize um, some type of force. Again, response to aggression. So if the suspect is uh, resisting arrest and a, and a deputy has to apply, uh, either point a gun at them, use a taser, threaten them with the taser, uh, take them to the ground, uh, whatever, then you check all the boxes on these forms as all the data that I'm giving you right here, the time of day, the uh, day of the week, um, what type of force was used, wh who was injured, was the deputy injured, was the uh, uh, suspect injured, uh, how, many for how many calls you had, uh, was it uh, adults, male, female, what, what race they were, all that's collected. And um, so with that being said, we had 566 arrests last year uh, for the sheriff's office. Out of those 566 arrests, we pulled five uh, response to aggression reports, meaning that when you look at the boxes, they either had to point their gun in a, in a felony type situation, not just merely uh, unholstering it, holding it on your side, but you have to point it at somebody. Or they had to take somebody down to the ground uh, or whatever. No suspects were uh, injured in those five reports that we had. Uh, one deputy was injured, uh, but was not uh, off uh, time of work or anything. So when you break down the statistics of that, when you, when you say five divided into the 566, less than 1%, so 0 .0008 um, times that a suspect resisted arrest, well, we, did we have to use use of force? I directly attribute that to the training that they're receiving, the supervision that they're receiving, and the documentation that, that we're requiring them to do every time that they do use of force and stuff. Because as you know, nationally, we've seen all the news things, you know, how this can blow up and how you can be liable for those negligent training, negligent supervision events, um, just like Minnesota, uh, that, that, that officer who's now in prison was not trained correctly and obviously wasn't supervised correctly uh, by, by putting his knee on the neck, which is not trained in any academy or anything like that. So this is accountability and, and transparency, not only for me, because I get these, it goes up the chain of command. That form is a one page, it's got all these boxes, but there's sign offs on the sergeant level, the lieutenant level, the captain level, and then it comes to my desk. And then we all look at it, we read the same report, and we say yay or nay, does that follow the policy? Is it within policy, is it out of policy? Do we need to do corrective behavior? Does the policy need to change? That's another thing that can be found out, that through no fault of their own, the policy says one thing, but you know, now it's changed because of the state law or whatever. Such as we had a law change last year on handcuffing pregnant females, you know, when, when you arrest a pregnant female or uh, says that they're pregnant. So th those things change and then the form has to change to, to go with that. Um, the next couple pages basically are just statistic pages you can look at, 10 year worth of data. Uh, that I pulled out of the system since Phoenix has been uh, around at the Sheriff's Office since around 2012 um, when they got uh, uh, on board with the, the city of Tiffin and then Foster Way came on a few years later than that. So our own statistics are right there for everybody to see. Uh, but for last year uh, statistics, you can see that uh, uh, those were the type of, uh, by day, all the 13,785. So you can see the time of day that were the busiest uh, and then the, the time of the week. Uh, are the, the the day of the week that we're the busiest and the uh, monthly uh, numbers that come in and then the quarterly numbers and then broken down into a pie chart that shows you our, our efforts of that 13,785. Obviously the blue part uh, is, is that, that number and then our, the reports, the officer initiated, the arrests, all that stuff is included in there as well. The next page shows you the 10 year averages that I was talking about uh, for the total number of calls for service each year and why we had the big increase. Uh, I put 2022 stats in there just to show you that for the first quarter, you can see that where we're at, uh, that's January, February, March. Those numbers are in there. I didn't include May, June, and July, or um, sorry, uh, April, May, and June because we're not done with June yet. Um, so it just kind of shows you where we're at track on probably even getting more than the 13,785 if we continue to get the volume of calls that we're getting. Uh, the accidents, we, you see the big spike there because we started handling more accidents uh, of our own here within Seneca County. 
uh, citations and verbal warnings, again, coming out of that COVID time and everything, that has suppressed a lot of those numbers as well. But they're playing pretty, pretty average on, on that as well. The next 15 pages we won't go over because those are all the individual township statistics um, that I'm going around and doing that for themselves. Um, but basically, if you look at it, we're spending 61% uh, of, of our time throughout all the townships and the rest of that time those 5,000 plus calls are either in the villages or in the um, uh, cities uh, handling calls uh, or unincorporated areas and stuff like that, that that we have our own calls for services that we do transports and stuff like that and if you get past through all the pages Stacy to page uh, 36 um, I want to uh, I wanted to recognize um, and we started an awards program last year uh, at the sheriff's office for uh, outstanding um, employees that, that go above and beyond. And there are BSSA, Buckeye State Sheriff Award uh, program, you just gotta adopt it. And so we did last year, and um, we had uh, uh, Deputy of the Year, we had Correction Officer of the Year, we had uh, Civilian of the Year, and we had Dispatcher of the Year. And those are the, the candidates on, on that page that uh, voted by their peers. So the, the biggest thing that I like about um, the, the Of the Year Award is that we put nominations out there, any employee can nominate all the other employees, uh, but they gotta give me bullet points. You know, they can't just put in your, your name or whatever, you know, without telling me why this person is deserving of, of, of the year award. We get a committee together afterwards, we tally everything up, uh, and we present the award. So this award is actually from their peers. It's not me selecting who is the best deputy or who the best civilian is. It's coming from their peers who are working for them. So um, I, I consider that probably one of the, the <coughs> highest awards um, personally because it, it is coming from your peers who recognize you uh, being that year long, uh, and, and I do have the, um, the the criteria for it. You know, somebody that is living our motto, our vision, our core values, and, and our mission statement. And uh, so, when you apply what they do every day for the sheriff's office and for the community, do they fit those criteria? Should they be the one that you vote for? The next ones are years for service. Um, so every five years at the sheriff's office, you get a, a star to wear on, on your uniform, if it's long sleeve or on the, um, the um, uniform like this in a, a pin type thing. Five stars equal, uh, or one star equals a five year active duty consistent at the uh, sheriff's office. So we had one person meet their five year, we had uh, three people meet the 15 year, uh, and uh, we had two people meet the 25 year. Um, uh, and they were uh, presented with those awards. At Safe Driving Awards are those uh, deputies or transport officers that have to drive for the job. Um, number one, you know, the insurance company makes sure that their record is clean. Uh, and if these are not, um, if there's no accidents that they're at fault at, then every five years uh, they can get a pin um, and then a, a gold star inside that pin for every year that they go. So these are the, the deputies uh, that do a great job uh, uh, out there. And if they do get an accident that is their fault, it resets the clock and they have to wait for you know, uh, yeah. the next year and stuff to, to, to get onto that five year plan. Uh, we had a lot of life-saving awards. Um, fortunately, I'll knock on wood, um, obviously when, when you have the mental health issues and you have the drug or, or alcohol issues and you're put in jail, um, it's not round-the-clock supervision back there like people would think. You know, there are times when they're sleeping, there are times when uh, um, between the checks uh, that are done because, you know, we can't stick you know, a uh, correction officer outside each person's cell of, of 200 people. We don't have the numbers, we don't have the budget for that. So there are times when they try to take their lives in the Seneca County Jail. Um, fortunately, uh, each of the times last year, and we had uh, numerous, uh, um, probably about five or six incidents last year, the deputies uh, caught it, you know, that were working back to the correction officers caught it. And or some of the uh, other uh, inmates have notified us through the intercom system, uh, made us aware of it. Uh, I've recognized both the inmates that have done that uh, and, and went into the cell and presented them with a, a life saving certificate and, and or a citizen certificate, uh, but also wanted to recognize the, the deputies and the nurses that have revived some of these people that, that did do the attempts. 
uh, and then they're given the proper medical and, and mental health care um, after they try to do something like this. We try to recognize it before that, um, but obviously, you know, uh, with the amount of population and the turnover in there, um, sometimes they don't want you to know that, especially if they're getting sent away to um, prison for a long time. Those are the ones that we try to keep a, a, a closer eye on, but you never know when somebody's going through that breaking point in, the, in their life. So we've been very fortunate. The staff goes through CPR training. They go through um, de-escalation training. They go through these um, life skill trainings, how to recognize some of these symptoms. You know, if they start seeing uh, inmates start giving away a lot of their property or, or making phone calls and crying or whatever, then they, they didn't focus that attention with the mental health on, on those people. Um, we is, that, is, that, is that done in-house? Yes, it's all done through the Firelands uh, counseling and stuff uh, um, that we have through that grant. Um, there are some accommodations that were uh, uh, given out, and those, those are the, the criteria is all listed for all these. Um, there was a citation that was given out last year as well, and military service awards for the veterans that, are, uh, that worked in the, um, uh, the sheriff's uh, office as well. Uh, the sec uh, third, wait, no. Oh, we're almost getting there. There's about three more pages, sorry. Um, this is a breakdown of what I took out of the system of the general revenue fund pay-in that uh, the sheriff's office collected fees or, or through ICE or through grants or through medical reimbursements or some course of reimbursements or whatever uh, of what we were able to put back into the general fund uh, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, help to offset the, the budget that the sheriff's office does. So that's a little pie chart. I combined some of the groups because when I first did it, it was, you couldn't even read it, it had so many slices of the pie there. So there's a lot of areas that uh, we get a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there, a lot of money from some of the uh, out of county um, uh, uh, inmates and detainees from ICE, uh, that is the biggest chunk there. Uh, that should, um, not should, it will increase. The last couple, since April, the pay-ins have been uh, uh, a lot better than they, they were in the past. So we should see uh, uh, to, to eat away and become a bigger pie for that and, and help with the, the budget. Uh, page 42, the third to the last page here, uh, uh, Sheriff's Reserves. I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize the amount of work that the Sheriff's Reserves does for the Sheriff's Office uh, during the fair especially, uh, but there's a lot of little things. For example, the critical incident we had at West Lodi just um, a couple weekends ago, uh, we had nobody to work the road. Number one, I had two deputies that were uh, being suppressed uh, uh, behind a wood pile on a tree uh, from the shooting incident. There was two uh, I mean, the rest of the deputies from the, uh, the next shift that were called in, uh, they had to go to the scene to help secure the scene. So we had nobody work in the county on the, the rest of the middle to the east, uh, west side. Um, so call was made to Denny Wilkinson, who's in charge of the uh, reserve program. Immediately he went down his tree and they, they had three uh, deputies come in. Uh, they took the work vans, uh, uh, the uh, correction vans, because uh, we have no spare cars, and they were able to go out and handle any calls that came in uh, and be available to the citizens uh, for that. So again, you know, without that resource to draw on, you know, we didn't even have mutual aid to draw on because Tiffin was there, uh, OSP was there, uh, Green Springs and Republic was there. So there really wasn't any, um, they were helping in the villages that, that we had their people until we could release them. So that's a great resource for there. They've also helped and stepped up for our parades that we're doing more of this year or last year, uh, the festivals that we're doing. Uh, one of the things that I said is that this is an all county thing. So not only should our deputies be helping out at the 4th of July um, festival that's coming up in Tiffin, uh, but we've helped out in Fostoria festivals, we helped out at the parades, um, we, we are helping out with the um, uh, Heritage Festival that's coming up, and in turn, you're gonna see those officers from Fostoria and Tiffin walking with our deputies at the Seneca County Fair. So, you know, the Seneca County Fair isn't just a, uh, a county thing, it's, it's everybody that's in the county. So those police departments um, should be helping out as well, and the, the police chiefs agree with me, we have done an unprecedented since last year and this year cooperation and collaboration with putting members on each other's teams and making this a whole county um, uh, skin in the game kind of thing that uh, we should also let the public see us do these type of events as well. Um, the retirement page, uh, those were the three long-term uh, retirees that uh, I was generous and put 85 plus years. It's a little bit more than that. Uh, I don't want to make it sound too bad for especially Ryan Green with 40 years of, uh, of law enforcement and then the other ones have over 25 years. Um, so they left at the end of the year. Ron Green actually left in April of this year. Um, so like I said, some seats have been uh, rearranged at the command staff level and back in the jail area. 
Uh, I'll let you read through the, the highlights for 2021. I give credit again to the commissioners and, and county administrator for getting a lot of the accomplishments done. There's some snapshot pictures of uh, some progress that was made in, in some of the uh, uh, remodeling and, and fixing that we did. And then the last page, I know everybody is anxious to see this one, is, uh, is the sheriff's app uh, that we've uh, uh, released in December to help with the winter stuff. Um, we've had a little bit of snafu with the inmate stuff, but that should be coming online here before August 1st, if not uh, before the end of uh, July, uh, or before the end of June, um, with some licensing, or not licensing, with some um, uh, Apple uh, agreements and stuff like that that got all changed around. Um, and one of our interfaces that was having problems because uh, we upgraded the jail to the, to the Phoenix system that we've been paying for, but we never used. Um, so Phoenix is now the whole office wide, but the interface between that and the Sheriff's Act will now give you a link that you can go on and check the inmate status will when it comes um, uh, in the next 30 to 60 days um, uh, to check the status of inmates. Uh, if you're a victim, if you're a friend or a family member, uh, or if you're just nosy, you know, um, uh, you see that uh, like uh, an arrest was made for something and you want to go look at what the charges are or whatever, it's all on there. It gets updated through the Vine interface that we have and um, uh, it'll be available there. Probation officers can't wait for that to happen. They'll be able to check on their people a little bit better and see what the charges are. They don't always get told the truth. So, Are you able to track the traffic on that or how many yes. Uh, yes. visitors you get sort of thing? Yes. Um, Apple is by far the, the most users on it. Uh, it's a free download. There's no advertising on it, so don't worry about that. Probably the biggest complaint I got is the weather part of it. So there is in the settings, you can go in and turn off the NWS alerts um, because as you know, at three in the morning, if there's high winds or whatever, they send alerts and stuff. So it's woken me up a few times I had to turn it off. So I only turn it on when the winter time's coming or I know we have a tornado stuff on, but it's an easy switch. It's a toggle switch you can go in and turn off. They thought we were the ones pushing all that stuff. I was like, no, that's, that's uh, Northwest uh, uh, weather services. It's not us. So go into the settings and turn it off if you don't want the high wind alerts, uh, the, the, the rainfall amounts or the flooding or those things because you can get inundated several times a day with those. Um, I, I have it on there for the um, uh, for the uh, um, blizzard, the blizzards and the, and the snow alerts and stuff like that. So Every time my uh, amber alert goes off in my phone, yeah, I'll jump out. That's another <laughs> weird noise that you jump out. out I want to hear that well. three in the morning. Yes. <laughs> yeah. the, the most uh, page that's gone to on that app uh, or link that's gone to is the sex offender map that you can put your address in and kind of go out a mile, two miles, three miles and you see the pin dots uh, and you can actually click on the pin dots and see who it is, what they're what they're charged with and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Thank you for your time. Uh, I noticed none of you dozed off, so that's good. Um, <laughs> well done. Actually, I have one, one last question too. Yes. I know we asked this when you gave this presentation last year. As far as the township calls go for service, yes. Why is Eden Township like twenty five percent? Okay, like, I I noticed it uh, when I was given the Eden Township. I was uh, uh, sitting. I got there early and I was sitting through there and I was looking. If you go to Eden Township page, and that is twenty five. Next year it'll be more down towards what Loudon and Clinton is. More populated areas, you're going to have more. Mm -hmm. It dawned on me on Eden Township that the sheriff's office is in Eden Township. We use our address to serve warrants that that are out of state or out of county. We use our, our address for the transports. We use our address for sensitive type calls that, that we don't initially put in there. So that's an inflated number. If you look under, like they have uh, 121 yeah. miscellaneous. Uh, they have 92 911 public assist calls. That, that might be one, that might be a correct one. They have 200 paper service and writs and appraisals. That was all from the 30, 40, South State Route 100. So once I take these out and I account for them next year, they'll drop down and uh, be more online with probably Loudon and Clinton who have a higher population and stuff. But good catch, because I didn't catch it until I was actually sitting ready to go in front of them. And I'm like, they said the same, why is our number? So I said, it just dawned on me, our address is in your township. And so everything that gets put in our address triggers that call uh, for service on your township thing. So I'll adjust next year and take out the transports, take out the warrant arrests and stuff that aren't physically uh, a residence that we went to and it, those numbers will lower next year. Good catch though. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure if it was a place across the street from you guys or space breaking <laughs> out every day or what. No, no. I was like, it's awfully hot. Yeah. All right. Um, also, as of tomorrow, 
We'll post this link on our webpage um, so the citizens can go download it uh, as well. Um, so I'll put a release out later today that is officially released, the done tweaking with it, done getting all the stats, and we'll worry about anything next year. So. You know, it was brought to my, I went to an Eaton Township meeting a little while back. It was brought to my attention. It's a dry township. Mm -hmm. Never knew that. So the I don't carry out, the, everything's across the yes. street. There's nothing in Eaton Township. Correct. You can't even have a drive through carry out or anything. Yeah. Did you know that? See, I learned, we all learned something. Yep. Been that way since 1980. Yeah. 1980. When I came on. Yeah. Okay. Was that, did the people vote that in? Yeah. In 1980. Yes. Okay. It's never been addressed since then, so apparently it's not a problem, especially with, you know, you can just drive to another county. So or another Lohawk Lohaw Lohaw Country Club doesn't count as private then, or? Yeah, print. I think Be careful there, what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I worked in Defiance, and Defiance uh, County was a dry county when I worked there in the 90s and stuff, so. Well, yeah. Actually, actually, in theory, um, the bottles of any type of alcohol are owned by individuals. Yes. Yeah. It's yep. Private, no, private. private organization. Yep. The members. That's but you do learn something new. Yeah. When I go around it's to the township good. trustees, I say for the meetings, I usually uh, learn it's something it's new. It's Each of the township it's trustees. Any any comments, anybody? Good work. Good. Thank nice you very job. much. Very nice. Thank you. I have another meeting. <laughs> Cut and run. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Stacey, we're in old business. Yes. Um, so I have old business, school of opportunity, board appointment. We have <coughs> received, we actually received six uh, applicants or letters uh, of interest. Uh, one of them um, had withdrew and submitted a uh, recommendation for one of the other ones that had submitted. So, uh, so in all, we had five. Um, there were two of them that we had to send over to the prosecutor's office to check because there was some concerns having some involvement with some contract services. So, you know, Derek had given the legal opinion that, you know, we should conflict. not, yep, we, it would be a conflict uh, unless things would completely change. So, uh, so then we ended up down to three. Uh, HR uh, went over it with me. Each of you had a chance to review. And um, uh, our recommendation would be Kim Radisson, um, her letter, her business background, um, it just stuck out for, for us. And um, I, after we had reviewed, we reached out to Lou and um, he had a chance to review these as well. But that was, with HR's help, that was our recommendation. Uh, I didn't know if you guys had had any other thoughts or questions about them. If, if I think she'd be great. She she she's got a lot yep. of experience with the YMCA board, the Calvert board. I mean, she's very involved. Yeah, I'll solo. Okay. We, uh, roll call? Did you get that? No, we have a motion. We have a second. You second? Yeah. And uh, any discussion? Further discussion? Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Okay, thank you. We're good, yep. right? Yep. Okay, Lou. Yes. You now have a new member to your board. Yeah. Yeah. Next, uh, Landfell. Uh, Mr. Nutter's requested to speak, so come on up. Man. Thanks. Good morning, Commissioners. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Uh, you know, again, I come to you on behalf of all the hardworking men and women out at Sunny Farms Landfill uh, with a focus on environmental health, safety, and operational excellence. I think it's important that we go back to the beginning and understand that back in 2018 and 19, the site wasn't performing well and there was a lot of reasons why that happened. But wind waste came in and um, while uh, Tunnel Hill Partners had agreed to a consent order from the Ohio's Attorneys General, Wim Waste came in and said, yeah, we're going to do that and we're going to do so much more. And we've continued to do that. So we're in compliance with the two, July, 19, July 6, 2019 uh, consent order. We continue to work towards um, our um, gas control treatment system that will remove 
98 to 100% of all sulfur dioxide that is currently flared off to control odors. Um, that is scheduled to be up and running, debugging um, as of two weeks ago, a year from now. So um, if you go out there, I would happily take you all around so you could see it again. I'll take you inside that facility so you can see what that is. We're gonna have an event um, to show the public um, what that is. I know that there was a lot of, there was a large amount of people at our um, permit hearing, but we knew that and we expected that. And we knew that because there's not been enough time between not great performance and the, and the performance we have now. So in a perfect world, and what I would have loved is that we could have operated another 10 years and shown the public and built back that trust and, and got those things um, all in order before needing to apply for additional airspace. However, based on the amount of waste we take and how much space we have, there would have been a large lapse in service. And that makes it very difficult to operate a business, as you can understand. So the reason for the timing is just that. We would offer to the commissioners, as I have in the past, that we would enter into a contractual agreement. You could have uh, uh, your legal contact, our legal, we would work on some sort of contractual agreement that would say we won't put anything into the new um, the permit to install the additional airspace area and we won't increase any waste we take in until we have our gas control collection system up and running. We would offer you that a contract that would actually give you an injunctive sort of power over the landfill whereas now the regulatory authority as you know is the Ohio EPA and the Senate County General Health District. We would offer that in lieu of a resolution that could send the wrong signal to investors looking to invest in Seneca County. Um, now, we, that's why we would do it. So but obviously, respect the board's opinion. I don't take this stuff personal. I've been doing this a long time. I get it. Um, also wanted to go back to the Title V air permit hearing. Typically, we have, so they, they have a final permit to issue. And the only way there's usually, or the only time there's a hearing on that is if someone requests it. The Seneca County General Health District requested a hearing on that and they made it a virtual hearing. But based on the amount of people that were at the apps applicants meeting hearing, they said, hey, we wanna make this in person, not virtual, which is perfectly fine. But understand that this Title V air permit gives us the ability to control the sulfur dioxide. Right, that's all that's for. It's a good thing for the community. It's a good thing for Ohio. So there's no, um, it, it, it's been made out to be by some of our opponents that, you know, it's something uh, bad, but it, it's not. That's, it's completely in place to protect the environment and we'll comply with it and we'll, we'll do the hearing and, and we'll go through, you know, um, all, every, everything that we're supposed to go through. But understand that wind waste is committed to the Fostoria area, Loudoun Township, and Seneca County. You know, we, um, I work, I, I work at several different facilities, but I also work there, and I know those people that work there. We're a significant economic impact on Loudoun Township. We're an important piece to the puzzle. There are people that don't like certain aspects about the fact are, you know, that we bring in out of state waste and so forth and so on. The reality is we've done everything we said we would do back in 2019 and more, and we continue to do more. So that is why I was here. I just wanted to relay that to your commissioners. Again, I don't, I don't take it personal. I appreciate your time. I'll answer any questions if you have them. So the Title V hearing has got nothing to do with permitting? It's got nothing to do with the additional airspace. Okay. Yeah. Yes, but it's confusing. Yes, and she, she did say that when I talked to her, that this, even if they would close down, this is her words, not mine, <laughs> they still have to have this permit um, mm. to get that system in place to be controlled. Even if we close down and we don't have any airspace and those 98 people that are working there today go away and they're not, you know, all of that, we would still have to have a Title V air permit and that air control system would still be up and operational. But the And it's only for the current not the expansion for the current but area the only reason there is a hearing is because the health department has requested that that is in fact yeah. it typically isn't that way usually no one does title five is a federal air 
National Air Quality Standards Act. Um, the, the title is five. And the so how do you think that meeting will go then? Because I mean, it's going to there will be a lot of people there who won't want to talk about Title V. They'll want to talk about the expansion. Right. You know, and we continue to say that we'll listen to a lot of these things. We've, but doesn't, you know, I mean, doesn't the EPA run that meeting? They do. But I think, you know, they want to, uh, the, and, and I don't know what questions they'll listen to. You know, I think um, just like the applicant's permit hearing, there were there was not there was no new information presented at that hearing. Everything that was presented was expected, um, and and I understand people's you know. But we heard a lot about water. My water's polluted. Well, we can improve scientifically, empirically, and mathematically that Sunny Farms has not impacted surface water and or groundwater. I, I I'm just concerned about the reaction. You know, if the assumption by the population is this is going to be an opportunity to voice opinions about things and the EPA comes in and says, you know what, well, that's really not this discussion, so we're yeah, not answer any questions, that could exacerbate the problem. Understood. Um, we would, you know, when waste, we'll entertain questions from people. We'll, we'll ha I'll, I'll have an open house before if people want to come out. You know, but, it's not meeting, it's not but it's not my meeting, yeah. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. I didn't. Um, I don't have anything to, you know, the the facility other than providing the background information and, but as a in accordance with the law, applying for the title for permit, title five permit, and explaining how we're going to comply with it. That's our only part. Then the EPA. To the EPA set in the meeting. Now. <coughs> well, what what the only okay. thing I'm thinking is we're having communication with the EPA about so a, a, about a location. Yeah. We might also ask them to understand they're going to do a Title V hearing. Will they also, while they're here, you know, have a section of that meeting that will listen to uh, consumer complaints or concerns? And there's, or so there's other. For, I don't. I don't. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not sure that they can do okay. that. In that, uh, but maybe. But maybe they can, but one and go right, on and so, but there's two more opportunities to talk, public opportunities to talk about the additional airspace, okay. as we go, and and they could be, there could be a significant amount of time between our applicants hearing, and the next public hearing that will be held by the EPA that will address um, the additional airspace within our borders that we have applied for. Okay, and I can reach back out to her and ask. I know. Because of the, uh, the the last meeting, and there were so many people, they didn't want to limit it. She understood that they're going to get probably people in there about the application to expand. But I will ask if that well, if you're accommodating that, does that mean you're going to allow questions okay. about that? I don't know. Okay. You know, in in, in wind waste innovation, Sunny Farms Landfill, we want to support the EPA in allowing people, and we want people to be able to express their concerns uh, as well. The Title V air permit is a positive thing. There's, yeah, right. you know what I mean? It's well, a representative from the EPA, <coughs> the answer of Title V questions may be different than the from EPA that can answer a concern. The, not only may be, they are. Right, so, yeah. you know, EPA, if they're going to be prepared to have that conversation, Indeed. then they need to write and then they need to send the proper personnel. Very good point. But I just wanted to clarify that with the board because it is confusing. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I did not know the difference. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know? She just explained yeah. that right. to me yesterday. And, and the public, and maybe there could be some clarification sent out by the health department or the EPA or, you know, that says what this is for. But I, again, that's all, you know. When are we trying to? When are they trying to have that meeting? Uh, she they didn't give me a date. She's just trying to find okay. everything she could do to find Once something find around okay. Bustoria. I would rather not do it in Tiffin. Like every other meeting, there's certain notification deadlines and those kinds of things. So to be certain, but that was the same issue that I ran into with the with the now and again, you know. Uh, it, it was only done because that was a facility that I knew I could secure that I could have the room to um, allow people to talk uh, as long as they wanted to, which we did. Um, so. Good. Thanks. Appreciate your time. Thank you. So, uh, I just have, I guess I have a couple comments. If we may. Um, 
So uh, this is me speaking and then we'll go uh, to the other two commissioners. Um, I appreciate you coming in, Ben, and I appreciate you making you know, the offer that you made. I, I personally am not in favor of the commissioners entering into a contract um, because, it, it, again, I think it would be overstepping our bounds. This is not our, um, we don't have direct authority over it, as you mentioned. Uh, this is an EPA and a, and a general health district issue. You know, that said, we represent the people. And um, as commissioners, we've begun a uh, process to, to, to uh, um, approve a resolution. And I think, uh, if I remember right, it was June 2nd, uh, we introduced a resolution to the public. We posted it, we took in comments. Uh, we posted it again on June 9th. Uh, um, and I believe, uh, Ben, your company had some comments, others have had comments. So uh, at this point in time, those, those are my statements. We have a resolution um, proposed and um, with that, I'll yield to Commissioner Kirshner, Commissioner Shep, for any other comments. Yeah, um, we, we, we were voted in to represent the people and our constituents, our residents, our taxpayers, um, not just from the turnout from the meeting the other night, but the calls we've been getting, the emails, the, just, just out talking to people. I don't think the, the public doesn't want this expansion. Um, there's a lot of things I want to be known for here in Seneca County. Having one of the biggest landfills in the state is not one of them. Um, I know they're decent paying jobs and uh, that sort of thing, but I'm just, I'm going to come out front and say it. I'm, I'm opposed to the expansion of this. That's where I stand. Well, it's a very difficult situation because you don't want to be, you know, we're, our job here is to create an atmosphere in which business can thrive. We're not going to create any jobs, but we are here to allow that to happen. Uh, I agree with uh, Commissioner Shub that we're here to represent the majority of people that, that put us in office. So, having said that, I will also support the resolution. Okay, so we have a resolution presented. Do I have any motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the resolution as presented. I'll second. Okay, we have a first and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Sheff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, administrator's report. Uh, I no, think I, new business. Yep, I think I'm I got sorry. it. Nope, thanks, Ben. Thanks, guys. New business. Are we supposed to sign? Uh, I think Jimmy said he had another date to fix. Yeah, it's in the first line. I didn't notice it. Okay. And we need lines for the signatures for the okay. pressure system. I don't really, I'll do my best on that. Okay. Or I can have Kylie do it. I can have Kylie do it. Okay. New business. So I have a few supplemental appropriations. Um, first one I have is the engineer's office. Obviously, we all know what's going on with uh, gas and diesel. So they're asking for an increase in the uh, diesel fuel line of $100,000. Um, there. Yeah, <laughs> they're asking for an uh, increase in their uh, gasoline line for $25,000. Um, I have a request uh, for juvenile probate court um, in there. What is this fund called? The Juvenile Probate Computer Fund Software License Servicing Agreement. Um, they, it's a needed for a off-site backup and a domain. Um, in their software licensing service line, four thousand fifty dollars. Um, I have a request from the sheriff's office. This is for their concealed carry, uh, concealed handgun license fund. Um, an additional six thousand dollars for supplies. They're allowed to purchase their ammo out of that fund, so she's asked for additional six thousand, less than uh, not having to take it out of the general fund. And then I have uh, another request from the sheriff's office uh, for their, um, what is it, their sheriff's commissary fund. Uh, <coughs> bless, bless you. you. 
into their other expense line for $1,911.43. It's their commissary fund um, contract service agreement. Uh, they need to do a reimbursement uh, for a check that didn't go through, so they needed that in place. Um, I think that's all of the... I think you took my resolutions. I read them. Oh, you didn't read them? I'm sorry. I thought you. <laughs> nope, you're going to send them back down. <laughs> yeah. back. I know she has the titles on there, but I don't have the date for the bids. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Is <coughs> that I kept the opportunity center? Oh, okay. Um, so I have a resolution appointing uh, Attorney Samuel Lillard a special counsel for the Seneca County Board of Development. Developmental Disabilities on behalf of the Seneca County Prosecutor. I have a lot of items today on the agenda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a resolution setting time, date, and place to receive sealed bids for the Seneca County Road 24 pavement resurfacing, contract number 2022 4. This will be on uh, July 14th at 10 15 a.m. here at the Commissioner's Office. And then I have Resolution entering into contract with m and Asphalt for the 2022 Seneca County Township Road Construction Program, the OPWC Issue 1, around 36. And I think I have the bid amount on there. I used to put that on the resolution for me. I know it's in here. Is this the one, the, uh, the big OPWC? Um, uh, $1,176,995.70 or 57 cents. And uh, that Mark's looked at it, um, Paul Eichoff looked at it, and uh, Brett Cleveland has went out to all those. Um, and everybody yep. was. I good saw that. email, so we're good. Uh, I, yep, I think that's all I had then. Stacey had a question for the, sure. for the concealed handgun licenses line item. Um, it just seems like every few meetings we're pulling money out of that fund. I mean, is, it, is all that money just from what they sell off the concealed yes. handgun? So they can use that money for other things besides just that department? Yep. I mean, it, Yep, they uh, actually, Sheriff uh, did a request from both the uh, prosecutor's office and the auditor's office, and it's it's set in the code what they can use it for. Okay. And, you know, we, we were kind of, um, just because of the nature of how the sheriff's office worked before, we had limited hours that uh, concealed carry was, was open. Mm -hmm. And I think when Sheriff came in, he opened it because people were complaining that they had to go out of county to get their license. So uh, now until the laws changed, might take that fund down a little bit, but so they had broadened what they could spend it on where some of this stuff was just using general fund money. He found out that he was allowed that he could purchase some of these items out of, out of that fund. $6,000 for ammo? Ammo, yeah. I will move that we approve the new business, including resolutions, appointments, um, and proclamations. I'll second Commissioner Kirshner's motion. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Schuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. The only question I have, uh, Commissioner Paradiso, is should we look at our line as it relates to uh, fuel? That's uh, a pretty shocking number for mm -hmm. uh, maintenance, but how about Sheriff? And, uh, See where they're sitting at on? Yes, yeah, uh -huh. obviously they, they probably are the largest user of fuel, I would guess. Probably Sheriff and um, EMS. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be a significant. I know EMS. John mentioned yeah. that. We're okay. talking about two and a half times the cost of work when we started talking about this. So, and diesel even works. Okay. I'm asking you that. So, I, but we may need, I mean, I'm just, we may need to set aside or we need to carve out uh, in anticipation. That, of, uh, that line only? That's what you're yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, we'll be talking about this every week. What? Okay, I'll have them radio and see what. It's called wisdom. I've been doing this a while. Yeah. <laughs> Anticipating the uh, 
the weekly ask. Okay, uh, public comment. Anyone in the audience like to speak? You're welcome. Look around. Anybody? Mr. Gilmore? The Gilmore Report. <laughs> I will just give you a quick update. We've got a few downtown events coming up uh, in the next week. Uh, to, or not tonight, wow. Tonight is the Thursday Night Tunes that's going to be at the amphitheater at uh, the East Green. That will be Eric Sowers playing that event. Uh, this weekend, specifically on Saturday, there will be the Summer Stroll. If you are still interested in doing the downtown Summer Stroll, You'll be able to get tickets here at Simply Susan's on uh, West Market. Uh, not wow, not West Market Street, Washington Street. Sorry. Uh, and then finally, another concert at the East Green this weekend. That will be with Kristen Merlin. That will begin at about 7 p.m. So just some events going on downtown this weekend. Uh, I know that you guys have been very patient with TSEP recently as we go through some changes. So I'd just like to thank you for that. And we will be starting with. Uh, Currently, Mayor Aaron Montz, but soon to be no longer Mayor Aaron Montz as our new president and CEO on July 5th. So thank you for your help in sorting that all out, and uh, thank you for your patience. Good. Thanks for coming in. Uh, yeah, Mike Ditto. Don't. should be able to themselves. Yeah, I just did that too, so... Oh, he he's great to such an asset. I know. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, he was on really earlier. Oh, he must have had to get off. Okay. No. Okay. Yep. You guys anyone who is online. <laughs> else? Anyone who's online, you should be able to unmute yourself now if you did want to speak. I do. Hey, Nate, go ahead. Can you hear me? This is Nate Heiser, Bostoria. Um, okay. So I guess my first, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. My first question is, uh, I'm curious as to the progress since the last time we talked. I know the resolution was passed and I appreciate the support there, but in regards to anything other than the resolution, uh, such as maybe bringing Chris Lund in to hear what he has to say or any uh, progress in the joint agreement breakup, break up, um, those two things specifically? I talked to Ann Goon at the health department, Nate, about Chris Lund, and she said that he is, I don't know what state he's from, but I want to say someplace south, and that he yep. only comes once a year, um, you know, at, because of the cost. So to have him present at a commissioner's meeting is probably not possible, unless we wait until the next time he comes up to talk to the health department. What about on Zoom? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm certainly not opposed to that. Uh, if uh, the health department can arrange it. Would the commissioners help put that bill? I mean, it probably wouldn't cost that much for you know a half hour of his time on a Zoom call, I wouldn't think. I, I don't think we're in a position, Nate, to pay somebody to give us a report. Uh, if he wants to do that voluntarily, I'm happy to listen to it. Do you want me to send him an email? Because his contact information was sure. on that report. Sure. Yeah, let's reach out to him. Okay, I'll do that. I mean, he is the expert, and uh, he is the middleman. Like I said before, I say one thing, Sunny Farm says another thing. He is the saving grace. He is the middleman, and he does the due diligence. I think you can all trust what he has to say. You just got to get him in a position where he can speak. Well, you got to be careful they going down the road of quote unquote expert testimony because if Sunny Hills uh, has a professional who wants to speak to us uh, and say the opposite or at least uh, you know defend their case, then we, we'd have to go through that too as a matter of fairness. So uh, you know I'm happy to listen to them, but just be careful what road you're going down here. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to listen to him myself. What about the joint agreement? Do anybody talk to the council and see if there's an avenue? Um, I'm what not that? sure. I'm not aware, Nate. This is Tony. Um, uh, we were gone last week, so I'm not aware of uh, your question. 
Last time I had talked to you about joining, breaking up the joint agreement and how the other two counties don't represent the same values um, and interests well, that South County rates. does in regards to the landfill. Uh, they seem to not care and not want to hear anything about it. And I know you three are on board with uh, trying to do the right thing for the residents of the county and they don't seem to see the same thing as you and it's always a 6-3 vote in case you wanted to make any change and that's just not a fair situation and i think that we need to look a little harder into getting out of that joint agreement does seneca county no good well i think it's a step towards that nate what i will suggest that we do and uh, i haven't spoken with the other three commissioners about this so this is just me speaking uh that we would uh, send the resolution that we passed today to uh, uh the other two counties ask them for their support of that resolution at least that would be a step okay. in, the, in the right direction i think that, i think that would be a good first step at least we would hear what they have to say anyhow yeah and i think we, 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 we haven't had a solid waste meeting we were out of town so uh i'm sure that uh all nine commissioners at the next meeting will have a discussion and so forth and I, I like the idea of sending the resolution in advance. But, you know, I don't think, Nate, we're at the point where we're going to walk in and try to break up the solid waste district. I think we are going to go in and we represent the people. And I think, you know, the rest of them need to understand that this is in our backyard and that we have questions and we just, we, we need to get some dialogue going internally and then we'll see where things happen. But, um, yeah, I, I would like to have that first meeting with everybody. Um, Deliberations first before the vision. To go, to take it, to see where we go from there. Yeah, and I got to remind you, Nate, we did go down this road with about six or so years ago with the Solid Waste District, uh, and, and I had mentioned it before, but it is a separate political subdivision. I mean, that would be like saying, uh, you know, we're going to disband Tiffin and form another town uh that's that i know that sounds outrageous but that's the amount of work you have to do in order to form a separate political subdivision well i guess i would say to that uh nothing worthwhile ever comes easy yeah, i think uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, there might be some other other things that can happen um you know financially internally things like that but um, well, to answer your question, we, we uh, thanks for bringing it up. <coughs> okay, so you've reminded us, okay. and uh, uh, we'll take this up at the next uh, solid waste meeting. Okay. Uh, okay, I just have one thing I just like to finish up with if I could. Um, I know Ben was up there talking how they're in compliance, but a consent order again is not in compliance and i know how you wished that we were 10 years out so we could see the results of this thing but the fact of the matter is we're about three years out and we still haven't seen any significant change when it comes to the emissions out of that place and in violation of the clean air act and lastly the uh for him to say that you know we don't want out-of-state waste well that really wasn't what we were focused on until they continuously mismanaged the out-of-state waste that caused such a problem for the county and now that's why we're against the out-of-state waste so it solely relies on them so i just wanted to make that statement i appreciate you giving me the time to talk today okay thanks thank you anybody else thanks jimmy uh, i don't see anybody last call if you would like to come forward you can hit the unmute button and speak now good Grab the gavel, brother. Okay. <laughs> Hearing no other comments, meeting adjourned.